Hello Grade 8 and welcome to the Answer Series Natural Sciences videos based on our study guides. This video covers more detail about the process of photosynthesis as well as where it occurs in plants and why it is an important process for life. All life on Earth is either directly or indirectly dependent on energy from the sun. Living organisms need energy to sustain their metabolic activities and life processes like growth, reproduction, nutrition and so on. As mentioned in the previous video, energy from the sun is known as radiant energy or light energy. Most organisms cannot use the sun's energy directly. For example, a lizard lying in the sun can warm its body from the sun's heat, but it cannot use this energy to move its muscles or reproduce. Plants, however, are able to trap radiant energy directly from the sun and use it to make energy-rich food molecules like glucose. Depending on the plant's needs, the glucose it produces can be stored as a reserve source of energy in the plant. The plant converts the glucose into starch, which is the storage form of glucose in plants. And we'll talk more about starch in the next video. Some of the glucose can also be converted into other substances, like for example cellulose that plants use for strength and support, proteins that help them grow, or fats and oils that provide their seeds with the energy they need to germinate and grow. The plant can also use glucose to produce energy for itself in order to perform all of these other functions. When plants trap the radiant energy from the sun in food molecules like glucose, an energy conversion takes place. Radiant energy is converted into chemical potential energy because the energy is stored in a chemical compound, namely glucose, and will only be released when the compound is broken down. For example, when an animal eats the plant. An animal that eats the plant will have direct access to the chemical potential energy stored within the plant tissues. And through this, the animal has indirect access to the radiant energy from the sun. So in simple terms, plants are kind of like solar panels. They can directly use the energy from the sun to produce food. Animals can't do this. They can only access the sun's energy indirectly by eating the food that the plants have made. On a side note, did you know that plants are not the only organisms that can photosynthesize? Algae certain microorganisms, and even some animals like this sea slug can also perform photosynthesis to produce their own food. Now this process by which plants make a glucose from the sun's radiant energy is called photosynthesis. Photo means light, and synthesis means to make. So therefore photosynthesis is a process that uses radiant energy, light energy, to make food, for example, glucose. As stated in the previous video, photosynthesis is a chemical reaction, so it requires certain reactants and produces certain products. Remember this flow diagram? From it, we can see that for photosynthesis to take place, a plant needs two ground substances, water from the soil and carbon dioxide from the air. We can also see that photosynthesis produces two products, glucose, which can either be stored or used in the plant, and oxygen, which is released into the atmosphere. We can also see that radiant energy from the sun is needed for photosynthesis. But how exactly is this energy captured and used? The missing piece to this puzzle is a microscopic structure called a chloroplast that occurs only inside plant cells. These microscopic organelles, structures inside a cell, not only have the ability to capture sunlight, but also give a plant its green colors. If you take a leaf and examine its cells under high magnification with a microscope, you will see hundreds of green dots inside its individual cells, and each of these green dots is a chloroplast. When you look at the detail of a chloroplast, you notice that it has many stacked membranes inside of it that kind of look like coins stacked one on top of another. And inside of these membranes is a magic pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a green photosynthetic pigment. It gives the chloroplast its green color. And any green parts of a plant, for example, its leaves or stems, will get their green color from the presence of chloroplasts filled with chlorophyll. 
To remember the difference between these two confusing terms, think of the phrase chlorophyll fills the chloroplast. Chlorophyll is responsible for trapping and absorbing the radiant energy from the sun that is used for photosynthesis. Without the radiant energy, photosynthesis cannot occur. So photosynthesis is dependent on light and can therefore only occur during the day. But where in a plant does photosynthesis take place? While only the green parts of a plant have chloroplasts with chlorophyll, so only the green parts can therefore photosynthesize. The leaves of a plant have the largest surface area exposed to the sun, so most photosynthesis occurs within the leaves. Stems may be green, but their surface area is very small compared to that of the leaves, so little photosynthesis occurs there. Roots are not green, nor are they exposed to light, so no photosynthesis occurs in the roots. Because photosynthesis is a chemical reaction, we can therefore write a chemical word equation for the reaction, and it looks as follows. Water and carbon dioxide are converted into glucose and oxygen with the use of radiant energy from the sun and chlorophyll in chloroplasts. Notice that chlorophyll and radiant energy are not written as part of the reactants on the left-hand side of the arrow. This is because even though radiant energy and chlorophyll are required for photosynthesis, they don't take directly part in the chemical reaction. They're only there to activate it. The components of the word equation can now be used to write a definition for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process in which chlorophyll-containing organisms, for example plants, use radiant energy from the sun, water from the soil, and carbon dioxide from the air to produce sugars, for example glucose, and oxygen. Photosynthesis is therefore important for all living organisms because of three things. It removes carbon dioxide from our atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that traps a lot of heat inside the Earth's atmosphere. If it were allowed to accumulate, the Earth would become way too warm for life. So by removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, photosynthesis helps to regulate our Earth's temperature. Photosynthesis also produces food for animals in food chains, and it provides oxygen for respiration in living organisms. Key terminology for this video includes photosynthesis, glucose, radiant energy, chemical potential energy, cell, chloroplast, and chlorophyll. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.